Tonight is November the 27th, 2019, and here is the uh, Quad 1625 modulator. If you want to see a schematic to this, uh, the best place to look, I'm going to adjust your camera here a little bit, the, ble the best place to look would be to uh, search for the words 1625 modulator and you will uh, see a very nice documented ARRL article on one that looks very much like this and I did take some inspiration from it. Um, the driver circuit here is 26S in 7s. This, this is a Williamson voltage amplifier. Straight Williamson. And I don't use a um, an interstage transformer and there's the one that I, the article I'm talking about, the 1625 modulator by ARRL would have a, uh, a little driver transformer right here. I use RC coupling because it works great. Um, I'm running the plates at 750 volts, that's the maximum, and I get uh, a bit over 100 watts out of it. I use no negative feedback, no NFB at all, and I have an enormous amount of gain so I can get full drive by plugging my microphone straight into here. And uh, this is uh, the D104 mic I use. This is actually a condenser mic up here in the head. And it has a battery in the bottom. It does not have an amplifier, but I use the, uh, the pot from the old amplifier that was in there because I needed to uh, control it because it put out uh, way too much gain way too much voltage but a regular D104 crystal mic drives it very nice too and uh, it's gonna work I want to show you I'm going to turn out the lights because you got to see these uh, VR tubes and uh, and these LV rectifiers come on let me crank this thing up so we can kind of scope in on it these things are really pretty turn it on here how about that? There was one gentleman that uh, asked me what was the uh, circuit for for the uh, VR tubes. It, it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, you, you have to tinker with it. But basically I'm using a, uh, a 9K resistor. I think it's like 9.4K to be exact. In series with the 750 volts it goes to it because you got to drop a lot of voltage across it. So um, I'll, I'll show you the circuit to that. I did draw that out quickly, but uh, this thing works great. I used a different uh, transformer in it earlier instead of this big guy right here because I have two of these. I'll show you how I can put them back to back and get uh, and get all that power into a 10,000 ohm load. It works. It works actually quite well. Let me see if I can find the schematic real quick. Yeah, here it is before I overlook it. Uh, coming out of the, I, I've used 816s in it too, 816s are 866s. I can't just willy-nilly uh, swap it because they have uh, two different size plate caps. But here's the 750 volts coming out. It's going into a 1.5 Henry 500 milliamp um, choke. I want to show you the part numbers of those. These are uh, 300 ohm, excuse me, 100 microfarad, 450 volt capacitors in series. Gives me about 33 microfarads at 1350 volts. 9.3K at uh, it dissipates 21.77 watts. I don't have one in there really quite large enough. This ought to be a, a 50 watt adjustable. And then it goes out to the VR tubes. And what I've written down here is under full load I get 300 uh, volts. And under uh, condition that it's sitting in now I get 306. There I wrote it, 306 to 300. And the 750 under 742 to be exact. Well, that varies a little bit, you know, depending on line voltage. Under full load drops to 662. Always maintaining the input voltage at um, 120 volts. I hope you've been able to see that really good. There it is right there. You need a 10K 50 watt right there. What I can show you is uh, under full load, the, um, the VR tube just just almost completely extinguish because of this the reason being I'm sure it's because this 750 is dropping to the uh, 660 level 
but it works really good. Now, when I had the other transformer in there, I used a, a 10K primary 50 watt, you know, 4816 ohm stereo type of transformer. I'll show you right here. This guy right here. Pretty good size little transformer. It's rated at 50 watts. I was able to get about, uh, oh, about 85 or 90 watts out of it. But I knew that the uh, plate load was a, was a bit high. It doesn't want to. It does not want a 10k load. It wants about a 7k load. And the way I'm doing that is this transformer, this one right here, that's in it, is a 3.5k, and it has an 8 ohm output, a 25, a 75, and a 225 ohm output. I believe it. It has all of those secondaries. I just put 16 ohms on the 8 ohm, and the reflected impedance is 7k. So I get full power. Here's what I'm using for a dummy load right now. If you ever run across one of these that you can pick up, keep it up there, great. Uh, this thing right here, at, uh, it's rated eight and a half amps, so you can draw eight and a half amps from any part of it, depending on how much you use of it. Eight ohms is right down here, 16 ohms is up here where I've got it. And it'll dissipate about 1300 watts, so you're not going to hurt that, and the inductance is very low. I've got it written down here, it's in the micro ohms, micro Henry, excuse me. So let's look at this guy. And I'll show you how it performs. Well, it's on right now. Um, the microphone, what I've done here, this is the microphone input, and I use the, the tip, um, the way that I have all my stuff wired, I use the tip right here for push to talk, and I put the audio right here on the ring. And of course, this is ground. So I put this little port in right here, actually basically a test port, just so I could uh, use RCA connectors. Let's turn the camera around to the equipment we're going to be making measurements on. Actually, uh, you can end up seeing the measurements better in the video than I actually can here in the camera because they're so tiny. But anyway, enough of that. Let's crank it up. Let's put some power out. Power, as you can see, goes up enormously fast. Here's 84 watts. You can see the same thing up here. Here's THD, one and a half percent. Now, I'm not trying to make a hi-fi amplifier here, so the reason I'm not using any negative feedback is I need a lot of gain. And without any NFB, the gain is so high that I can drive it directly. And uh, I believe you can see a nice clean sound wave over here. And we'll watch the power. That's at a kilohertz, of course. Everything at a kilohertz. If we run it up to some, you know, before... Before we get uh, notch distortion, well, here's 126 watts. I realize it is distorted there, but uh, you could uh, you, you there's basically no distortion right there at 105. Here's about 119 with a little bit of clipping. So somewhere around there, I guess we want to be really conservative. We call it a 100 watt amplifier. We put it at 100 watts. There it is, 1.36% THD. And it stays pretty consistent. The THD is right up here. There's its voltage across 16 ohms. You can square that and divide by 16, and you'll get those uh, power numbers. So it's uh, quite a nice. Yeah, I want to show you back around here. I got to turn the camera back around. That the I'm going to turn the lights out again too that the uh, VR tubes do not extinguish unless I drive it. I'll, I'll show you where they where they start to extinguish. Watch them. You'll see them go out and when I, when I overdrive it there they go. See there? Okay, they actually went out right there at um, at 131 watts. But that's, that's overdriving it. Now we're getting, let's see, darn, it's always so hard to show everything at once. We can uh, we can see right here. Let's scope in on that. We're getting notch distortion. I don't think we want that. That's overdriving it. That that has to do with the bias. So let's turn it down here. And as soon as I turn it back down, the um, the VR tubes came back on. I get the same performance with the H sixteens as I do the H sixty sixes. But I just happen to have the large cap zone right here at, at this moment. And here are the uh, 816s. 
give me every, everything the same. Power levels the same, distortions the same, gains the same. There's no difference. <clears throat> I am using this little uh, regulated supply for the bias. Let's see if I can move the camera around here without too much pain. And if you could look right inside there, it's got its own little VR tube. Yeah, you can see it glowing kind of purple in there. Right inside here. That's a little bit of overkill, but what the heck. I did have one problem with that, and I ended up smoking uh, four of my tubes for the 1625s. Fortunately, I have plenty, but I definitely hate to ruin them. What had happened is I, when I turn it over and sit it on its back, I have to pull the, uh, the rectifiers out because they can hit the, the ground. So I pull them out <clears throat> and putting it on its back and setting it down, putting it on its back, sitting down. I didn't realize, but I had shaken, vibrated, whatever you want to call it, this thing loose, so I had no bias. And I didn't, and you know, my voltage was dropping, my tubes were getting hot, and next thing you know, they start sparkling inside. And once, once they start sparkling inside, that's, that's the end of it. You probably destroyed the screen. So anyway, that's that. Let's turn over and, and, and look underneath it. I'm going to power it all off. That's, and uh, we'll, I'll show you what's underneath it, and that'll be that. But I guess I, I, guess I should show you how, how I can turn this into a high impedance modulator circuit here. So let's, let's, get, let's move on to that. Okay, here it is underneath. Um, the way that I like to do the uh, high voltage uh, capacitors is I just use some sort of an insulating board. It's off, power's off, everything's drained, so I can touch it. Even though I know I can touch it, I'm, it, it, it's still hard to stick my finger in there and touch things. But um, I use a, a, an insulating board and I use a little bit of goop on the bottom of, of the capacitors and I stick them down and you can see now if you look at them carefully they're parallel. Initially they were not parallel and I had them in a Pi network across this uh, choke right here. Let me show you this choke in case you like part numbers. This one is from, uh, I don't have the um, uh, Mouser part number but if you go to Mouser and look up this number 159V you'll see that it's a one and a half Henry 500 milliamp 27 ohm DC resistance and they're cheaper than what you can buy old junk ones for on eBay um, but anyway I, that's the way I do it and I had it set up as a, a, a pie filter but I was getting right at a thousand volts and that, I knew that wasn't going to make things happy things were not going to last very long like that so I, I disconnected it and, and rewired it a little bit so I took the input capacitors off which were these and I ended up just putting them parallel on the output, so I got like 66 microfarads on the output of a uh, choke input filter. I put all of the um, move the camera around here again. I did all of the transformer connections to a to this little board because the transformer, all the transformer wires are a little bit short. I put them all in and ran them off of that. This is a hum balance right there in the middle. I don't think you could see that while I was pointing at it. Let's get back over in front of it. Sorry I have to move the camera around. I know it bothers uh, some of my viewers here, but sometimes you just got to move it. This is a hum balance. I found that uh, I could reduce the hum considerably and, and the distortion by putting a hum balance across uh, the six volts here. And another good gentleman, thank you, sir. I've already thanked him uh, in comments. I initially wired this thing for all six, all for 6.3 volts. I ran this 6.3 volt line over here to the and I noticed that they didn't light up very bright, but it just didn't dawn on me. These are all 12 volt filaments, so that's why I had, I had to add a, a secondary transformer over here. This is what lights up the 1625s. Um, I open up the secondary with this little switch right here. That's the way I turn the DC on and off, just opening up the, um, the center tap of, uh, of that big transformer. I don't think there's anything under here terribly exciting. <clears throat> I, I use the, uh, these types of plugs so I can unplug the power cord so I don't have that dangling all the time. And just a standard old fuse. I'm not sure I'm going to go with this right here. Can you see that? Yeah. I'm not sure I'm going to go with these uh, quarter inch jacks or not. This is 8 ohm right here and I've got this one right now I think wired to the 225 ohm. <clears throat> these are the, uh, the, the primary is just red and blue. That's the way I uh, 
determine make sure I don't get the wires crossed up on the plate cap what I do up there is is the red wires that are going up I have a red dot of uh, fingernail polish right between those two tubes and the blue ones I have a uh, a blue dot so you don't want to get them messed up because if you do then uh, and you got any negative feedback which I don't so in this case it actually really wouldn't matter but it would matter if you cross them you'd have some problems so that is that I am uh, still tinkering with it just a little bit right up here in this area which I, I'd have to pull the camera off to and get right up in this area this is the gain control I'm getting a little bit of hum that uh, that is annoying me. I don't think it's significant, but if I can hear it at all, it bothers me. And if I pull out this tube right here, the thing is absolutely quiet as a mouse. It has no hum, no hum and no hiss, except when I uh, plug in the first uh, amplifier stage right here. Like I say, this is a Williamson design. And then I'm, I'm getting some pickup is what I'm doing. I've put shielded wire around all of this, but I may have to build a, um, I don't know, maybe this, maybe I'm getting something from this center tap. This from the AC wires being too close. I may have to build a shield around it or something like that if I want to make it absolutely quiet. Now, it being an AM modulator, it, it doesn't have to be as quiet as a stereo amplifier, but you know, you don't do the best you can. Let me show you some other part numbers that uh, I'll start trying to do that every once in a while if, if this helps you guys. Uh, I bet everybody likes to use these little uh, solder terminals. You, you know what these are? Can you, can you see them? You know, the, these little solder terminals that you put to ground? Yeah, I believe that. Well, anyway, it's better to order them from Mouser because they're cheaper. They, they come in all sizes. Number four number six number eight and here's a part number for them five five three four seven three one three mouser part number five thirty four seventy three thirteen these are about the same this is seventy three eleven this is seventy three twelve so you know part numbers like that may, may help you they, they certainly do me and back to the uh, back to the chokes. Here's the smaller of the chokes. This is a um, a one Henry 300 milliamp, and there's its part number. The reason I'm giving you these part numbers. This is these things are kind of hard to find. I love Mouser, but <clears throat> finding things in there unless you know uh, unless you call it what they call it, it can be pretty difficult. The part number here is five four six one five eight T, as in Tango. That'll get you in the in the group in case you're needing some of those uh, some of those chokes. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I've got to drag this thing down to the basement. I'm actually uh, already got a much larger modulator in mind with a pair of 813s since I've already got that amplifier built. So I guess I'm just never satisfied. But I have gotten to the point where I wrench my elbow, not my elbow, my shoulder and my arm and end up in <laughs> end up in physical therapy. I know you don't want to hear about my ailments, but uh, maybe I'm going to have to quit building this big stuff and, uh, you know, go to transistor, like one transistor radio, something that doesn't weigh over maybe like four ounces or so. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I hope not. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay safe and uh, we'll keep moving.